Trauma and bleeding are major cause of death worldwide. Let's discuss its pathophysiology and treatment. Watch till the end for a surprise. The normal coagulation response initiates when the vascular endothelium is injured. This activates platelets, which adhere to the injury site, forming the initial platelet clot, and the coagulation cascade, amplified by activated platelets, leading to a thrombin burst that cleaves fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrin monomers crosslink onto the aggregated platelets, further stabilizing clot formation. In normal conditions, anticoagulation and fibrinolytic processes limit excessive clot formation to maintain vascular patency. On the left you see the normal endothelial cell function which limits spontaneous coagulation processes from occurring. On right you see trauma-induced coagulopathy arises from severe tissue damage and hemorrhagic shock. It is characterized by widespread endothelial cell activation with glycocalyx release, impairment of platelet function, consumption of coagulation factors, dysregulated anticoagulation and hyperfibrinolysis. Together, these factors result in an inability to form and maintain clots. Also, immune cells are activated and crosstalk with activated platelets. Trauma-induced coagulopathy is often defined as a prothrombin ratio as greater than or equal to 1.2. Viscoelastic hemostatic assays during active bleeding may show a hypocoagulable profile without or with fibrinolysis, as illustrated here. After hemostasis, trauma-induced coagulopathy may shift towards a more hypercoagulable profile. The timing of this shift can vary from minutes to hours after injury and is patient and injury-specific. Inflammation, endothelial and platelet dysfunction may result in thrombosis and organ dysfunction during this phase. If you are finding our videos helpful, do give us a like. Early stage can be treated with bleeding control, early administration of tranexamic acid, limiting crystalloid infusion and administering balanced blood transfusion of red blood cells with early plasma and platelet products whilst maintaining adequate electrolyte levels and temperature. Late stage is managed with definitive surgical repair, thromboprophylaxis and organ support. Here is a chronologic overview of randomized trials investigating the effectiveness of currently used treatments for trauma resuscitation. The interventions are reported in green for trials showing benefit in their primary endpoint. For trials that did not show benefit in their primary endpoint but were positive in pre-planned post hoc analysis or subgroup analysis, the interventions are reported in orange. The Rep Hill trial did not show benefit from prehospital transfusion of red blood cells and lyophilized plasma, shown in red. Combat was negative in the primary outcome, but when data were combined with PAMPER, early plasma was associated with improved survival when transfer times exceeded 20 minutes. A selection of upcoming trials is reported on the far right. These upcoming trials are investigating whole blood compared to blood components the early supplementation of fibrinogen or the use of factor concentrates to correct trauma-induced coagulopathy. Thank you.